Good morning, everyone, and uh, those of you who may be uh, struggling over from the west coast of the U.S., good evening to you. Uh, I think I probably have the hardest presentation of this session to present after uh, after uh, Dr. Nicholas uh, presenting there. I think that was super exciting. Uh, it was the second time seeing it, and uh, I even learned even more the second time watching it than the first. So my name is John Stegman. I joined Neo4j a few months ago this summer. Uh, people call me Steggy or Stegosaurus. Uh, it was my childhood nickname, so you can call me what you like. Today, I want to talk uh, really quickly about something called Workspace in Aura DB. Now, those of you who uh, have been working with Neo4j in the cloud probably know what Aura DB is, but some of you may not. Aura DB is our cloud offering. So it's a, uh, a database that you can use freely in the cloud. There's a free version, and then there's versions that uh, have more capability in uh, you know, larger and larger servers that you pay for, of course. And so what is Workspace? Let me talk about first uh, what I would call the, the current experience, which you may have already experienced. You, you, if you've used Neo4j, you've probably seen these three tools that are on the screen in one form or another. You know, on the left, something called Bloom, which is used for visualizing and exploring the graph in a visual way. Uh, give that big picture of, of the data and how it's connected to each other and, and uh, you know, dig in and really understand visually how that data looks. There's something that we call Browser, which is our query tool so that you can write Cypher queries and, and uh, you know, really shape that data that you're returning, see that data either visually or see it in a tabular format. And we also have a, uh, a newer tool called Data Importer, <clears throat> which lets you take uh, file-based data and import it into a Neo4j graph database. And each of these tools today, if you go into Aura today and don't do anything, you'll see three buttons in AuraDB. You'll see uh, an Explore button, which corresponds with Bloom. You'll see a query button that, that corresponds to browser, and you'll see an import button that corresponds to data importer. And in fact, we could just jump over and take a look right now. This is my AuraDB console. I've already created a couple of databases, and you could see what I just described. We've got Explorer, which is Bloom, Query, which is browser, and Import, which is the data importer. So what's this thing called Workspace? Well, Workspace is simply us taking these three tools and combining them into a single interface. So rather than having to you know, click on another button and then sign back into the database and do this context switch, if you will, we now have all the tools uh, under, one, under one roof, uh, so to speak, so that you could sign on once and access all of those tools together. So, and that's what we call Workspace. And so Workspace today is available to anybody who would like to try using it. It's not fully there yet, so we're, we're kind of calling it as an, an open beta, and I'll explain why it's in beta, what, uh, what might be missing for those of you who want to use it. But to access Workspace, it's really simple. You Once you've signed on to the console, you can click on your profile, and you should have the ability to switch over to the new interface that we call Workspace. And just with a simple click, you can see now I no longer have three buttons that I need to go jump from one to the other. Let me just copy my password and I'll give you a quick tour of how to navigate around Workspace. So we'll sign in one time, <coughs> excuse me, and we'll uh, start off in the Explore uh, uh, tab, which as I said before is Bloom. And if those of you who've used Bloom before will be really familiar and comfortable uh, in this, the way I like to get started uh, in Bloom, if you've never used it before, is just to quick click the uh, the uh, the question uh, the question uh, box up on the upper left here, and then just click Show Me a Graph, or you could just type Show Me a Graph. What Show Me a Graph does is it just executes a query to get some sample data back from the database. Um, 
It's just a, a representative uh, data to help you start exploring. And then you could zoom in, you could do all the things that you're used to doing in Bloom. By the way, what this database is showing here, it's, it's the, uh, the stack overflow sample database that you can create in AuraDB. And if, you're, if you've never used AuraDB, hang around for the, uh, the, the next presentation, which I'll show you how to access AuraDB and spin up the, a database like this. And all the things that you can do in Bloom standalone, you can do in here. We can uh, uh, select related nodes and select everything that might be related to a question here, et cetera. So I'm not going to go into the real details. There's a session in the America track that was recorded that you can watch, with, which is a much deeper dive into the capabilities of Bloom. Now, if I want to use uh, what we call browser, here in Workspace, we call Query. I can just click on the Query tab and then I start writing my SQL query. So just something as simple as match uh, and uh, relationship to you. Yeah, very, very simple, uh, you know, write a query, just like you could do today in browser. And one little trick, if you're new to Neo4j database and you've got an existing database like this that you'd like to find out more about, you can do something called call db.schema.visualization inside of browser. And you get an idea of what your data model looks like inside the browser. So you could see we've got user nodes, we've got question nodes, tags, and so forth. And then finally, the data importer. Uh, data importer, as I said before, was a way to take data that exists in files on your operating system, CSV files, TSV files. And I'm just going to go grab some here and give you a quick run of how this looks. Let's say I've got some movie data. Those of you who've been around Neo4j know we like to use movies and actors and directors as sample data. And I've just dragged those CSV files in, and I can now start uh, mapping uh, uh, nodes in the data importer to data in that CSV file and get that imported into the database. So what I've shown you is something really simple. And it's what we've done is we've taken three tools, browser, uh, Bloom, data importer, which were three separate tools, and we brought them together under a single user interface, really just to streamline the experience. Now, I said before it's in open beta. What might you miss uh, if you were to use browser versus the individual tools? Uh, right now, Bloom and Data Importer, to the best of my knowledge, those are uh, feature uh, on feature parity with the existing versions. The piece that's not quite on feature parity yet is the Query tab uh, is not yet achieved feature parity with browser. So that's the only reason that it's, uh, it's in beta. Uh, so again, if you'd like to use this, Log on to your ORDB console, go to your profile, and you could switch uh, using the little switcher here, and you can go back and forth. Those of you who uh, do go out and use it, be sure to give feedback. You know, if you uh, notice something that's not working, or you notice something you like, notice something that you think would make it better, jump out and give us some feedback. And one more thing, let's just check the time here. We've got just two, three minutes. If you'd like to find out some more uh, about Workspace. My colleague, uh, JT, uh, has just dropped within the past 24 hours a playlist on YouTube. It's got kind of a long URL up on the top there, but if you've got your camera handy on your, on your phone, just scan that QR code and it will take you right to YouTube and you could watch these. You could see here it's about uh, just 10, 15 minutes of videos where JT will talk about Workspace and give you a little bit more information in a deeper dive. So with that, let me just glance over at the question, Sid. I think we have just a few moments here. Mona, I think you've found it. Yep, it's up, up on the uh, profile, up in the upper right. So just to show that again, you, I've got my picture here. You drop down, that's where you can switch over to uh, Workspace. So with that, the slides will be shared, video will be shared. And if you'd like to stick around in about five minutes, uh, those of you who never used AuraDB before, I'll show you what it's like just to get started with AuraDB. Thank you. Sid, over to you.
or maybe not. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing while uh, uh, while we're waiting for the next session to start. There he is. Hey, Sid. You're on mute. Oops, my bad. Thank you. Thanks so much, John. Uh, should we get started with the second one? Yeah, give me just a moment because what I wanted to do is to, to uh, destroy my free instance. Uh, right. so that I could show people how to create one. So if you give me just a second, I'll, I'll go ahead and share my screen again, and we can jump right in. That's good. Meanwhile, folks, uh, to connect with other uh, other people who are joining in on the in the stream, uh, send in your questions to John in the Q&A section. Uh, while you are doing that, John, would I like to take up one question, which is, uh, by Tom, is there anything you can share about the future direction of Bloom, short term, long term? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, there, I'm probably not the best person to answer that. I do know that one of the things uh, I remember in the session on the Americas track earlier today about Bloom, uh, where you talked specifically about some improvements or some new things coming in Bloom, and that was the integration with graph data science. So at Bloom is a, is I've, I've shown you you know 0.1 percent of what Bloom can do here in this in this really quick presentation, but one of the things you can do with Bloom is to uh, <clears throat> surface a visualization of some part of your graph or all of your graph, and then run some data science algorithms against that. We have a couple of I think network centrality, and then there's a couple of uh, I can't remember. There's four algorithms in total, and I apologize. It, it's escaping me what the four are. Uh, but one specific new bit of feature that I know we're working on is exposing more of those algorithms uh, with from within Bloom itself. Got it. Sounds good. Can you? Yeah, you may want to. Uh, you, oh, there we go. Michael, thank you very much. Yep, there were, uh, he, he is uh, referring to the earlier presentation that was on the other track. Uh, you may want to jump over there. It's about a it's a full thirty five minute uh, session on Bloom. If you'd like to have a look, thank, thank you. you. Yep. And uh, just there was one more question, Lydia. I'm not sure I understand your question. You're asking, can I open the workspace? Um, I'm not sure. You might, if you'd like to clarify your question uh, in the in the questions there, maybe we can get you a better answer there. All right. All right, so let's let's move on to the second talk here. And the second talk, you know, we're calling easy on ramp to graphs. Now, why do I call this an easy on ramp to graph? Uh, if you're like me, let me share a little bit of my history. I, I, as you probably can tell by the little gray in the mustache here that I'm growing for uh, for Movember, I've been around for a few years. My my first uh, job experience where I did something where I had to use a computer language, I used Fortran. My second language was SQL and my third language was Smalltalk. So of, of those, uh, I imagine there's people on the, uh, on the, in the meeting who, who have used SQL, but there's probably substantially fewer who've used Fortran or Smalltalk. But at any rate, I, I tend to be a very hands-on, when I got some software, let me get it on my computer, let me install it. And as you know, uh, with any database, there's you know hardware requirements and software requirements. And <clears throat> uh, today, I just don't want to deal with that. Sometimes, right? Just I, I just want to get started. I want to get up and running. Maybe I don't have a powerful enough laptop uh, to to run a database, or for whatever reason, it would just be easier for me to spin something up in the cloud. And so that's why I'm calling this the easy on ramp. This is all about AuraDB, which is a way for you uh, to spin up a database in the cloud for free. It will be perpetually free. It's not something you're going to get charged for. It's not a time limited trial or anything. Uh, it's a free version of Neo4j graph database that you can run in the cloud and get your hands on and start experimenting with it. Now, I've only got one slide for you here. Uh, and the slide really is the link that you go to. If you go to this link, and in fact, if you just search Neo4j or a DB, you'll get a link, excuse me, to this page. Just go right to the middle where I've got the arrows there and click start free. You'll need to create an account, uh, sign in if you haven't done that before. Once you've done that, <clears throat> we'll take you right over to the console. Okay, you've seen the console before. <coughs> excuse me. If 
uh, you haven't created a, uh, a database before. You'll just end up with a blank page here with no instances. Uh, it, in my case, I already have one, but uh, for a new user, you just click on create uh, instance or new instance up there in the top. And as you can see here, up on the top is where your free uh, free database options are. Down on the bottom, you can see there's a professional instance, which is uh, something where you know you want to scale up from the free instance, maybe get some more. Uh, capacity, run on larger servers with backups and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, there's that as an option. But let's focus on the free options. Now, maybe you want just a plain empty database with nothing in it to get started. You can click at empty instance here. For us, let's go uh, and jump in. Maybe we want one with some movie data in that. You simply click one of those options. What we're going to do is we're going to create that database instance for you. While we do that, I'm going to copy the password and uh, paste it over here in my other window. So <clears throat> we're going to create that database instance. Make sure you copy this password, by the way, because this is the only chance you get. And it'll take a few minutes for it to spin up. Now, while that spins up, rather than wait here, what the next steps might be, we're going to jump over uh, to the, uh, the pro instance that I have created here, which is an empty database. And we'll come back to, uh, we'll come back to this one in a minute. So within a few minutes, you'll now be able to uh, just jump right in and start using that new database that you created. Here on our site, let's go over to an empty database that we have here. Uh, remember here on Workspace, I need to get the correct password for that. <clears throat> here we are. Go right back into Workspace. And uh, I had started working on this before. Uh, so let's go ahead and add those files back in. There we are. So what might I start doing? If I've already got some data, maybe I've extracted it from a relational database or I've got some file-based data that I want to load in and start experimenting with, I can use the, uh, the uh, Neo4j importer, the data importer. And what I've simply done is just taken a few CSV files from my, uh, from my laptop here and I've, I've dropped them into the data importer. I'm not going to go through a, you know, a really deep demo of the data importer. We just don't have the time to do that today. But really simply, I can just start adding nodes here. In my data, I've got some movies. So maybe I want to create a movie node. That movie node will be mapped to this particular CSV file. From that CSV file, I'd like to have these properties, movie title, budget, countries, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to go through, as I said, and do everything here. Once I've done that, I can continue mapping the other files. So I've got a people over here. So let's go ahead and add a, a people node. I'll call it a person. So again, really similar. Uh, we can add persons. We can add some properties here. We can create relationships between them, etc. Like here is a, a relationship. Maybe we have a relationship where a person has acted in a movie. And you can see I have a CSV file over here that contains those relationships. And when we say here, okay, we need to, before we can do this, we need to identify what the ID property is going to be uh, up here down here on the bottom. So the ID of this person will use that ID. The ID of the movie will use that ID. And then for the relationship, we can say from person to movie. Here really simply, uh, just kind of a point and click without having to write any code. Uh, we could import that data into our database. We can do a preview, which will give us a, a quick visualization of what that graph would look like. Um, uh, you know, kind of an approximation of what that's going to look like, and then simply run the import. And what I'm doing here is I've now taken the data. I haven't mapped everything, but I've just done a few things here and have imported uh, 93 movies. I've imported 444 people, and I goofed up somewhere in my uh, relationship. I didn't get any uh, relationships created, most likely because I clicked uh, the wrong ID on the wrong side of the relationship there. But once we've done that, we can now just jump straight over to 
uh, start exploring. We can run uh, queries. We can uh, go into Bloom and see what our data is. So here we are in, in uh, browser or the query tab, and you can see there's the same exact uh, data that we saw. So why is this uh, useful? I'll tell you, it was really useful for me when I started at Neo4j, as I say, uh, you know, how do I get started? How do I learn uh, more about the graph database and start exploring it and, and writing my own queries and, and dealing with my own data? Rather than installing any kind of a software, just pop up in a browser, jump off to ORDB, and we'll go back here uh, again just to give you that uh, URL and the QR code if you'd like to save that. And really quick way for anybody who's never used a graph database before to get up and running. Now, the other question you may ask yourself is, okay, great, I've got this graph database. I'm really not sure what to do with it. Uh, I don't know anything about graph databases. I just need some quick education uh, to teach me what to do with the graph database. And for that, the easy thing to do is just to Google Graph Academy. And I'm sure Michael or somebody is going to be dropping a link here uh, in the chat. And if they don't, I'll do that. Uh, that is <clears throat> free online self-directed uh, training where you can go to there, learn about Cypher, how to write queries, learn about data importer, learn about how to model your, your graph and learn how to use this graph database uh, effectively to do the kinds of things that you wanna do. So with that really simple, let's uh, have a look at the questions here. I think we have five minutes, is that right, Sid? Yeah, that's right. Gotcha. Uh, oh, so really, how does one add their picture to their account? That is a good question, and I actually believe this question came because I signed on with my Google account. Okay, so that picture, I'm guessing, it, it's been a few months, so I apologize, I don't know, uh, I, I can't confirm this, but I'm pretty sure that that's my Google profile picture, and that just automatically came over. Yep. Great. A Mona question, will uh, AuraDB have APOC installed automatically? Got good question. I know that uh, APOC, there's, I'll be having another uh, talk in about, gosh, how long is it from now? About seven hours from now, where I'm going to talk about some of the new capabilities in Aura and Neo4j 5. Uh, I don't know the answer to that question. Maybe somebody on the, uh, on the call does. The, uh, you know, mark your question on uh, a public endpoint. Yes, it is a, uh, it is a public endpoint. Uh, <clears throat> we don't, I believe, have any specific security on that endpoint. Thank you for uh, putting the question up there. Uh, however, one of the things we do have with AuraDB is the uh, ability to uh, use the name, the name of the cloud feature is escaping me right now, but it's a, essentially, a, you know, virtual private connect in all the major clouds where you uh, you essentially can uh, connect that directly to your VPC and access OrDB only through your uh, VPC. So in a corporate environment where you need to secure that, that obviously is something that you would want to use. Michael, thank you for the link there. Other questions? I'm looking over at the other side here. I think we've got all the questions answered. Any other uh, questions? No, I think those are the questions that we have from the audience. All right, so thank you, everybody. I've, I've uh, enjoyed, uh, I have hope what I've shown you here today in these really quick sessions are just how easy it is to get uh, up and running in AuraDB in the cloud and to start uh, and to start using a graph database that maybe you've never used before. Yeah. John, before you go, I think there are two more questions that have just popped up. Uh, yep, we I, have, uh, yeah, uh, you can take them up. Yep, so Andrews, the database is in a, oh, so you're, you're going the opposite direction there. Save Cypher queries in the Bloom. Well, they they will find those saved queries. Yes, so the, the saved, um, when you say save queries in Bloom, I think you probably mean you're talking saved uh, scenes in Bloom. Those are actually saved into the database itself. So if somebody is logged in with that same user, they should see them. Uh, if they're not seeing them, then uh, 
there you can uh, you can raise a ticket uh, with the Aura team to uh, to get some support on that, but that should work to the best of my understanding. And Andrew, is the database is in a, a single node? Yes, uh, it is. Is it is is blah, blah, it is in a single node. Uh, in version five, again, I'd I'd uh, I'd suggest for some of these deeper questions, especially when we look at at sharding and clustering, to uh, attend probably the the Neo for J the, the Neo for J five for administrators session that was. Uh, in the uh, Americas session and view the recording in there where we talk about some of the new capabilities with clustering and charting in five. Uh, but those capabilities will be exposed through APOC as well. By default, you're getting a single instance here. Um, but there are, uh, excuse me, those capabilities will be coming to the OR platform as well. Splendid. I think we are right on time. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thanks. So much, John. It was Everybody really enjoy the rest. Yep. Thanks, Sid. Thank you.